Okay, so in this session we will discuss a little bit about these two exercises. For the first one, the 1 1.7, uh, we have a collective collective risk model uh, that is with a random variable s equal to the sum of these random variables y. But uh, the number of random variables that we have in the sum n is also a random variable. In this case, it's a random variable with a Poisson distribution, and the this is a frequency random variable, okay? Mm -hmm. And the severity random variables in this case will be uh, with log normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared, and the problem asks to obtain explicit formulas for the expected value of s and the variance of s. So this is not a really difficult problem, but it's uh, especially for for the log normal distribution, we will see like the easiest way to get the values. There are a lot of of ways to get it, but we will see like uh, what I believe is the easiest one. Um, okay, I, I I write here the important facts. Now this is the, the random variables that we are interest, interested in. Um, okay, we got a, a Poisson random variable, the log normals random variables, and we will have to recall that if we have a random variable x with a normal distribution with these parameters, then if we define this other random variable y equal to e to the x, this new random variable will have a log normal distribution with parameters mu and sigma squared. This is a way in, in a way to construct this distribution, okay, uh, with this transformation of a normal random variable. Another equi equivalent way to see it is that if you have a log normal random variable, in this case, in this case, y, with these parameters, then the transformation x equal to the natural logarithm of y would be a normal uh, distributed random variable. This is the reason because it is called log normal because it's logarithm, it's distributed normal. Okay, but uh, the way to construct the distribution it's in in this way. Okay, this is a uh, an important fact for this exercise and we can also recall that for example for the Poisson distribution the probability mass function of that distribution evaluated in a value little n would be this expression e to the minus lambda times lambda to the n over n factorial and this for n values in 0, 1 and all the other uh, non-negative integers, okay? And for the log normal case, we can compute using this kind of transformation of a normal distribution. We can compute the the density, the probability density function of that distribution, in this case for the random variable j y, evaluated in a little j value, and this will be 1 over g times sigma times the square root of 2 pi times the exponential of negative um, log log of y minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared and this only for uh, positive values of y okay how can we get this with with this transformation of a normal distribution is not difficult to get it, but uh, maybe if you like a lot of probability you have already seen this, but if, if you don't you can't uh, search for this, or if you want to construct this model from zero you can use this transformation, okay? It's not really difficult to get into the details and get this expression out, uh, knowing this of course. Mm, but now uh, we we know that in this uh, collective risk model, we have 
that the expected value of s is equal to the expected value of n times the expected value of yj. So, uh, for example, for the Poisson, I think this very is a very famous result that uh, in this case for n, because it's a Poisson random variable, the expected value and the, baran, and the variance, the both will get a value of lambda, that is the parameter of this distribution, that it's like a very famous thing that we have in probability for that specific distribution. I think that it's uh, something that you may know about. But in case you don't, you can always compute it with this. No, you can compute it uh, calculating the, the sums, uh, the corresponding sums to, to get these values. Okay, it's not uh, impossible. It's it's not uh, quite easy, but it's not mm, quite difficult. It's uh, it's possible to do it. But I think that you may remember this. But for the for the other part of the formula that we need, maybe that is a little more complicated. In this case, we will do it like in a clever way, and would and that would be with the next recall. Now, if we have a normal distributed random variable x, then we may remember, or, or we may not remember, but it's a fact that the moment generation function of that random variable uh, evaluated in a value t would be the exponential of m mu times t plus sigma squared over 2 times t squared. Uh, this is not very easy to prove, but I think that it's uh, pretty basic for a probability, for a first probability course, or, a, or well, yes, for a first probability course. But uh, in case you do not remember, you can try to, to prove it. It's not very easy, but it's not impossible. But in case you do not remember this, you may have to memorize it because it's very useful sometimes, okay? And with with this, we can do this clever thing. We can define uh, the transformation uh, y mm, equal to e, e to the x, that this would be a log normal distribution as we have recalled uh, in the other in the other <laughs> in the other information. This would be a log normal distributed random variable, okay? And we may note that we can compute the expectation of this random variable to the to the power k as this. Uh, we substitute that mm, y is equal to e to the x, and then we will have the expectation of, it, of e to the x to the k, and then we will just have to to multiplicate these two exponents and we will have the expectation of e to the k time x and if you check it out this is the definition of the moment generating function of this random variable x but evaluated in k this is the definition of this moment generator function and we have the expression in this case for the x to be a normal distributed random variable, we have here the expression for this moment generating function, but evaluated on a value t. But, uh, well, if we want it in a specific value k, we just have to evaluate it in that specific value, and we will get, uh, in a very easy and fast way, this, this value that would be the expectation of j to the k. Okay? In this specific case, to calculate the mean and the variance of a, we will just need these first two evaluations when k when k is equal to one and when it's equal to two. When it's equal to one, we will need the moment generator generator function of s evaluated in one, and if we evaluate this in one, we will just get e to the mu plus sigma squared over two. If we evaluate it in two we will get e to the 2 times mu here, plus um, we will have uh, two, the 2 here 
in the in the t square so we will have mm, four a four and with these two we will just get a two and sigma squared will we will we will maintain it so we will get this value at the end okay and now that we note these values we can calculate for example oh sorry the variance of one of these random variables because oh come on I did not write the sub index um, because this will be the specific case oh here we need the index of two um, this would be the specific case for a log normal distribution but in this case we have that the the severity random variables are log normal distributed so we can use this these formulas and if we want to calculate the variance of of j that of yj sorry that we will need it for to calculate the variance of s we can you just we can just um use this property of the variance that is the expected value of j of yj squared minus the expected value of yj and then square it to that value and in this case that would be uh, the first value would be this okay that is here and the second value would be this one but squared and if we square this one we will have to get a 2 multiplicating these two exponents that are adding and we will get 2 mu plus uh, 2 times sigma squared over 2 we will just get uh, sigma squared and we can factorize this term out of these two terms like we are doing here and we will get that term that we are factorizing times uh, e to the sigma squared just one time because he, here we have it two times so we will leave just one one of the sigma squares and a minus one because we are factorized the entire term okay the entire term so we we can get this this expression for the variance of a uh, log normal distribution in this case for y j and uh, okay this will be the conclusion so this will be the, the expected value and the variance of the, our severity random variables, okay? And then if we want to compute, for example, the expectation of S, we will just have to do uh, the expectation of N times the expectation of Y, that would be the expectation of N is lambda times this value, that is uh, the exponential of mu plus sigma squared over two. and this expression would be the formula, the explicit formula for the expectation of S. To calculate the, the variation, the variance, sorry, of S, we will need to use this formula. This that is a little bit more complicated, but uh, now that we have these two values, we will just have to substitute it, and you can do that in in your house. At at the end is your homework. It's not difficult to substitute the values and you will get the explicit formula for the variance of well now we will get into the the next exercise we will read it first this is a 1.8 and it says let x to be a Pareto random variable with parameters beta and theta and therefore with probability density function as follows now it's this is this expression that we have here then consider a portfolio of one year term property and casualty insurance under the collective the collective risk model uh, okay here we have the, the the collective risk model okay where the frequency is a random variable n that is defined as this is defined in terms of this x uh, Pareto random variable, okay, it is the the maximum of the set of the integers um, greater or equal than zero that satisfies that n is uh, less or equal than the value x minus theta. 
Okay, so this is a a random a new random variable because it's in terms of this one that is a random variable. And also it says that the conditional severity for claim is given by uh, y given n equals to little n is distributed as a Pareto distribution with parameters 2 plus 1 over n and delta. Okay, and this is for n greater or equal than 1. Then it says y, because for example, if n is equal to 0, s will have to be equal to 0. Okay, that is, that is the reason because this is only for the other cases. So uh, we have to calculate or estimate the expected value, the variance, the median, and the bar at this level of s and of s given um, that s is greater than zero and using these specific values for the parameters so it's a very uh, long exercise we will see that it's not a, a an easy one to solve by hand so we will have to to try to approximate these values with simulations, okay. Uh, so now we will we will first just check a little uh, a little detail. Uh, if we have the Pareto random variable x that that the exercise defines, uh, we can note that in this Pareto distribution, for example, seeing the density function, we can note that the positive values for this density function are where the, the value little x is greater or equal than theta. And that means that for this random variable, we can, we can assume that we'll take only values greater or equal than theta as a random variable, uh, because there is where the probability is, okay? And then uh, we can use this and re re write it as x minus theta is uh, greater or equal than zero. And why is that important? Because if this value is greater or equal than zero, we can see that the value inside of the definition of n is a greater or equal than zero value. And with that, we can just um, note that the definition of n is the 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 oh it's we have to use here sorry it's a it's a minimum sorry a maximum okay so the definition of n is the maximum the maximum of this set of integers okay so is the the maximum of the integers that are under this value, but since this value is positive, the maximum of the non-negative integers that are under this non-negative value. So in this case, we can rewrite this definition that it's a long one with this notation. Okay, and we are searching for the for the max value of the max integer value that is uh, under this not necessarily integer value. And we can denote that with the floor function, okay? And the floor function of this, of this specific random variable that would be x minus theta. So all the definition of n, we can write it as the floor function of the random variable x minus theta. And since this value x minus theta is a random variable, uh, the frog function of that would be a transformation of that random variable and would be another random variable, okay? In this case, that would be our frequency random variable. And in this particular case, we are not assuming that the severity random variables are independent for the frequency random variable. We are, instead of that, we have this information. We have the information of the conditional distribution of the severity random variables given 
the frequency random variables that condition that conditional distribution would be this Pareto distribution with these specific parameters that depends on n okay so if little n changes uh, this distribution will also change okay so uh, so that is the reason because uh, we have it written in this way because we to calculate using this distribution the probability for the severity we first have to know how many claims do we have uh, what was the value of our frequency random variable okay and this other parameter the delta parameter that would be fixed okay uh, now we want to calculate uh, the expectation of s the variance of s and the bar at certain levels of s and also for s given s bigger than zero but first we will have to do it for s and then for x bigger than zero okay uh, for example if we want to do it in a theoretical way uh, we would first have to calculate uh, the distribution or in this case the probability mass function of the random variable n and to calculate that <laughs> we will first have to calculate for example the distribution function both of this x random variable because the random variable n is in term of the x random variable and uh, we will do not check all the details because this is like a very long way to do this but uh, to calculate for example the distribution function of this you have to integrate the density function that is this expression that we have here from minus infinity to a value of little x and if you uh, do that integral you will get that the distribution function of s is given by this or this expression 1 minus uh, theta over x to the beta power and with this indicator function for x being greater or equal than theta okay and then if you want to calculate the distribution function of this other random variable uh, x minus theta we can do it uh, with this transformation technique we we want this and we can just substitute the definition that would be the probability of x minus theta being less or equal than little x and in this case that we can write this as a probability of x being uh, less or equal than x plus theta and this is the distribution function the definition of the distribution function of the random variable x but evaluated in x plus theta so we just have to take this value and evaluate it in this expression and we will get 1 minus theta over x plus theta to the beta and the indicator function of x plus theta being greater or equal than theta is equivalent is equivalent to the indicator function of x being greater or equal than zero and then when we have the distribution function of this random variable x minus theta we can get with that the distribution function sorry the probability mass function of this discrete random variable and that remember that was the floor function of x minus theta uh, that would be for a, a non-negative integer n the probability for the random variable n to be equal to that uh, little n would be the probability of this random variable the floor of x minus theta to be equal to little n but this happens if and only if uh, the value inside the floor function that is x minus theta is between is greater or equal than n but uh, lower than n plus 1 and this probability we can calculate it in terms of this distribution function of the random variable x minus t and since this random variable would be a continuous random variable we can check that this is a continuous distribution function 
uh, we do not have to to worry about uh, the the right limits or the left of the left limits of this function and just evaluate it and we will get that this probability is this distribution function of the random variable x minus theta evaluated in m plus 1 minus the same distribution function but evaluated in n and if you uh, use this expression and get into the details of these evaluations you can easily get that uh, this probability would be equal to this expression theta to the beta times 1 over theta plus n to the beta minus 1 over theta plus n plus 1 to the beta and now now that we have that this would be the probability mass function in general with this with the indicator, with the indicator function because this was only for the case of n to be in, in this in this set but in general we will have to write it with an indicator function and when we have this expression if we want to compute the expectation of s in terms of the expectation of n times the expectation of y we will have to to first compute for example the expectation of n using this probability uh, mass function so uh, in general for uh, an arbitrary value of theta this will be almost impossible to compute <laughs> but in our specific case when theta is equal to 1 that is the one that the exercise says okay in that specific case we can do <laughs> Uh, the next computations I will just explain it like very quickly because this is not very important you can check the details with calm if you want in your home but I will only explain like really really fast uh, but the idea is that we have to solve this this series okay that is the definition of the expectation and then we will have uh, this specific series the probability mass function of n with the value of theta that would be uh, substituted here theta equal to 1 and, and we will get n plus 1 and n plus 2 in these two, two, two parts and then times n so to solve this series is not an, an easy an easy okay there is not an easy way to solve this series I think that maybe the only way that you can solve it is to use a little trick you have to, to see this n that is multiplicating as a finite sum of n ones okay so that is like a very hard thing to think about it but when you think about this you can uh, get all this value to the sum to this sum and then you will get a series of a sum okay and the idea is to change the order this at the end would be a double sum so the idea is to change the order of the terms that you are adding and you can do it with this trick that is okay it's like a very useful trick but it's not a very famous one uh, I first was my, my, my intention was to explain it with details and, and all the, the things but <laughs> I think that it's it has no point to do that if you want to 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 check out the details uh, and you do not understand a, a little part you can send me a message but the idea is to change the 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 form of the sums first to sum with k and then with n uh, uh, instead of this that we have to oh, sorry here, uh, here we first sum with the index k and then we sum with the index n but if we want to, to do it the other way, first to sum with n and then with k, we will have to use uh, this, this, uh, this identity for the double sums. Uh, that is the form to change uh, this series of a sum in terms of two series. <laughs> and okay, this is a, a, true, a true identity. And if we apply it here, we just change like the order of the of the indexes and then <laughs> the, the the series that we got inside you can uh, you can oh sorry sorry for that uh, so now the the series that we have inside 
we can't analyze it. And when you write it as a limit of a finite sum, you can find out that the finite sum is a telescopic sum. And then we will just have the first term minus the last term. That will, that will be the, the remained value. And then you can analyze that the last term, when m tends to infinity, m would be the top the top value of the sum. When m tends to infinity, that is to calculate this series, uh, this, this tends to zero, so this dies, and you, and all this would be to, to prove that the expectation value of n would, would be just in terms of this series that we have out, and what we have in would be this expression, and then the expectation value of n would be the series from k equal to 1 to infinity of the value k plus 1 uh, to the minus beta that we can re rewrite it as the sum of n equals to 2 to infinity of 1 over n times beta just changing the index okay this is are the same sums just write it in different ways and this it's uh, <laughs> Almost the definition for the for the positive values betas of the Riemann set of function evaluated in beta, but uh, we need uh, the first term of the series that would be one. So this other series would be the set, the Riemann set of function evaluated in beta minus one. So at this point of the calculation, when I saw this, I understand that. Uh, this has no more case. No, if for the first value that we want to calculate, we are getting this kind of expressions. This would be almost impossible to do in hand for the other values that would be more complicated. But it's like a very curious, cu curious fact that ex uh, just the Riemann set of function appears here. Okay, it's like wow. No, like a. A mad thing, okay? It's very, very crazy. And then, in our specific case, <laughs> we will have to to use beta equal to three. So, in this specific case, uh, the Riemann theta functions evaluated in three uh, has a name. It's the upper is constant. That is a, a irrational number, and it's approximated value. It's uh, it's this one. And minus one, uh, we will get this this other approximated value. So, <laughs> using like a very, very um, unuseful, well, not unuseful, a very um, a typically formula in math like t three minus theta function and this upper is constant. But using that, we we can get that the expectation of n in this particular case would be. Uh, theoretically, the Riemann set of function evaluated in three, that is the upper is constant, minus one, and that would be uh, the, and a good approximation of this constant would be this value. But I, I insist, this is getting really, really crazy. And this is only to compute the expectation of S. We will also have to compute, for example, the expectation of, of yj, and that would be really, really hard to do it. So I believe that at this point we can just uh, we can just uh, note that this is a very difficult problem to solve by hand. So if we cannot solve it by hand, we always can do simulations to get approximated values of the solutions of this exercise. So now uh, we won't get the other explicit formulas because that would be really hard and we'll have no point. And uh, in, in, in place of that, we will get, we will um, see, we will study how can we simulate uh, the random variable S. And with that simulations of the random variable S, we can estimate the expectation of S, the variance of S. And if we have a lot of simulations, that estimated values would be really close to the real values, okay? 
So uh, in this case, it's a tricky one because we are not assuming that the random variables, the severity random variables are independent of, of the frequency random variables. So we will have to be uh, careful in how do we do the, the simulation, okay? I write here, I wrote here, sorry, the steps to simulate this random variable. There are uh, essentially four steps. The first one is to simulate a Pareto distribution with parameters beta and theta. Okay, that would be simulating get get to get simulations of the random variable x. Okay, uh, what random variable x? The one that the problem says. No, this one. Okay, the one that is in the definition of n. Okay, we will have to first simulate this random variable. Uh, in general, we have to get m simulations of of this distribution, and then we will get m simulated values that we can call uh, x1 to xm, okay? And then with these simulated values, we can just evaluate the transformation that defines the random variable n. Remember that the random variable n uh, we can see it as the floor function of the random variable x minus t. So, if we have already simulations of the random variable x, we can get uh, with an easy method simulations of the random variable n using this transformation. You can uh, use, well, you can define new n sub i values uh, as the floor function of x sub i minus theta, okay? And these values will get you simulations, how many? M, M simulations, one for each x i, M simulations of the random variable n. And we will get these M simulations, n1 to nm, okay? And now that we have these simulations of the random variable n, we will need to simulate our severity random variables. This is our frequency random variable and we have already the simulations, okay? So for each value of these simulations, for each ni, we will have to simulate uh, the random variables j, yj, sorry, given n equal to ny. Why? Because we know that this conditional distribution is a Pareto random variable with parameters 2 plus 1 over ni comma delta okay so since we know this distribution we have to use this and we will have to 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 get uh, simulations of this conditional distribution and for that we first have to know which is the value of n that we have to take so that is the reason that the first the second step and the first step the first and second step uh, what we need, well, what we get, sorry, are th these like simulated observations of this random variable n. So we will have to suppose for each ni that n is equal to ni to use this uh, distribution as this conditional uh, distribution model, okay? And here for each ni, uh, we will need and I simulations of these random variables. Why? Because this index j would be between 1 and n i. Why? Because remember, we have our collective risk model to be the sum. Okay? So first we have to know how many how many claims do we have? How how what which is the value that our frequency random variable takes and then uh, when we know the value of our frequency random variable we know how many severity random variables we have so for each specific case of the value of ni we will need ni simulations of these severity random variables okay with j between in this in this set okay and that will give us these values, okay, uh, we can write it j 
eh, sorry, y sub i, coma 1, then y sub i, coma 2, and then in general, y sub i, coma j, uh, 2, y sub i, coma n i, ok, this will be exactly n i different values, ok, and this, we will have to get this amount of values that will change when i changes, for i, in this interval of numbers, well, not interval, in this set of numbers, for i between 1 and m. So for each different ni, that are the previous uh, step simulations, for each one of these values, we will have to, to need a different number of severity random variables, okay? And now that we have these simulations for each case of ni, for each case of ni, we will get a different simulation of s. So to get the m simulations of s, we can get it as s sub i equal to the sum of the simulations of our severity random variables that are these numbers, but in the specific case when we have n sub i claims. So in this specific case, we will just have to sum this these severity simulations, and we will get a simulations of s. Mm -hmm. And here would be with i going from 1 to m. And with these simulated values of s, uh, we can estimate uh, the expectation of s, the variance of s, the median of s, that is the bar at level 0.5 of s, and also the bar at other level, for example, at level 0.995 of s also and also you can you can use these estimations to get estimations for the case when s is greater than zero mm -hmm. and of course the bigger the m that is the total number of simulations that you are considering for s the bigger m is the better okay for example i i believe that in the mexican laws uh, you have to use at least m equal to 100,000, but uh, you can use an even bigger uh, m, okay? Uh, the professor told me that he used uh, m equal to 1 million, but you can use uh, the m that you want, okay? But I recommend you to use a big m, so then your, your approximated values would be a good estimations of the theoretical values, especially in this case that we uh, that we are not able to get an explicit formula for the theoretical values, it is very important to use very large values of m, okay? Okay, and just to, to end the session, uh, we can be uh, more specific how to simulate, in how to simulate, uh, well not simulate, in how to estimate uh, this kind of numbers, the expected value of s, but given that s is positive or the variance of s given that s is positive, etc. For these estimations, you may use the same estimation methods for these values, okay, for example, for the expectation of s, you can take the sample mean, for the variance, the sample variance, okay, for this uh, median and the bar, you can use uh, order statistics, okay, but uh, you can use exactly the same estimation methods, but only considering the simulated values such that s i are greater than zero. Okay, you will get uh, a total of m simulated values of s, and some of these values of s may get the value of zero. When you want to estimate these ones, you get rid of that values that give you uh, a simulation value of zero, and you just consider the values. Um, that are positive, and then with that positive values, you you estimate the median of that values, the the the, the sample mean of that values, etc. Okay, that would be a an easy way to get estimations of these uh, conditional values. Okay.